Have you ever thought that part's too thin to make? Well on this episode we're going to look at how to make a thin part on the mill with a bit of careful planning as I make this reversing lever. Welcome to the Fill Engine Project where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. For today's part, I'm starting with a pre-machined piece of offcut. It's 9mm by 15mm, with 9mm being the finished width, so we're going to save a bit of time with that. First task is going to be to machine this to correct length. So I square one end, flip the block over, and do the other end. Once it's squared both ends, I measure the length, then I set the digital readout. This will then allow me to make the final cut. Next we're going to turn the part 90 degrees in the vise. This will give us access to machine the side of the part. I use a machinist square to ensure it's aligned with the vise. Then I make a cut to square the block. I zero the digital readout on the aligned face. This is now my point of reference. From here I can remove the bulk excess material. For this I'm using a 12mm end mill, which is nice and rigid and great for bulk material removal with a mill of this size. With the bolt material removal done, it's time to switch end mills. Next step will be to cut the fork, which is a 5mm slot with a 5mm radius at the end of it. So a 5mm end mill looks like a good choice. Before I machine the fork, there's a couple other jobs to do. Starting with cleaning up the faces. This is a brand new end mill, so it makes a better surface finish than the old one did. I clean up the face of the fork protrusion and check its length. From this I can set the digital readout and make the final cut on that as well. Right, with the final finishing cuts taken, it's time to cut the fork. I'm going to do this in several passes, taking about 1.5mm per pass. Once 
what you'll notice is we've got a good chunk of material left on the back at this point. This is the key to making this part, with the back providing the rigidity until we've made the part. We're using a similar trick with this forked feature. The thin front section wouldn't survive if we cut the slot in one pass, but the material below provides the strength until we've removed it, so the only time it's unsupported is when we make the final cut. The other consideration here is minimising cutter force, in this case using a small diameter end mill. Right, with the fork finished, it's time to drill the holes. So I switch to the drill chuck and use a wavy spring parallel for support. The trick with these wavy spring parallels is they can move out of the way if a drill bit hits them. If you don't have a set of these, you can actually make your own using some steel packaging strap. At this point I set the digital readout. For this I'm just using a pointer that I turned in the lathe, as the hole locations in this part aren't highly critical. So close enough really will be good enough in this case. This part has a threaded hole, so I use the spring tapping guide to align the tap and tap the hole, backing off occasionally to break the chips. Now the holes are finished, it's time to bring the part down to thickness. So it's back to a 12mm end mill, and I locate the part face down on a parallel. This is the point when the part's going to become thin. How thin? 2.5mm. So the part's only being held by less than a millimetre, with the fork feature giving us a little extra hold. To help my chances at success, I'm only cutting from one direction, using the forked feature at the start of the cut to ensure the part doesn't pull out. Another consideration is minimising cutter force, in this case by making smaller cuts. Right with the park down to thickness, it's time to head over to the bench. I'm going to hand file the ends, as it's not a critical element, I saved the setup. Otherwise I could have done it with a rotary table, on the mill, but as I say it's really not necessary in this part. Right with the part complete, Let's run through the key points for success when cutting thin parts. First up, always plan to provide support. That may mean having sacrificial material or leaving material to a final cut to ensure features are supported. Next up, maximise work holding. Ensure the parts are well held down and utilise features to your advantage. Finally, consider minimising cutter force. This may mean making a smaller cut or using a smaller end mill. So next time you need a thin part, just remember these points and give it a go. It's probably easier than you think. If you've got another tip on cutting thin parts, share it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss the next episode, and share it with a friend. And I'll catch you next time.